much for having the introductions on um, publications. Uh, it's embarrassing to go from paper craft to someone who doesn't <laughs> so I apologise for that <laughs> immediately. Um, some small context for this <coughs> prose piece, um, if it loads up, uh, which was during lockdown when there were a number of uh, articles and data coming forth about um, independent bookstores and how they were being affected by um, not being able to have any customers. Um, and Influx Press and I decided to do an auction um, for uh, the right to bid for a piece of prose to be written um, from a suggestion of a title that you give to me. So you submit your title, I'd, if it was a winning bid, I would then write a piece of prose inspired by or otherwise by your title. Um, one of the winning bids uh, was from a very generous um, artist, uh, called Isabella Strachan. Um, however, as an amazing artist she is, she did not fill in the spreadsheet correctly and did not <laughs> offer a title. Um, so this one I feel slightly more able to vouchsafe to an audience uh, apart from just sending it to her. So uh, this is for her and it's called The Horticulturist. Um, and it starts with just a small extract from um, William Cooper, William Cowper's The Task from Book Three. Uh, and that goes, who loves a garden loves a green hand too. Unconscious of a less propitious clime, there blooms exotic beauty, warm and snug, while the winds whistle and the snows descend. Um, and it's called the horticulturist. It is so difficult to sleep when there's always something growing. Thoughts crop up or spread like something is taking root, or they bud or compost. Thoughts do all of that. Thoughts thicket. Deadhead me, I plan on joking to the sandman when he approaches my bedside. He would advance with happy tread and ready to trug, and I would gladly fall into all manner of lomishness. Let's wait for him together. I was told recently that I should try magnesium as a sleeping aid, but before their sentence was even finished, I was already thinking, oh no, a deficiency of magnesium might call yellow or chlorotic leaves and spotted areas of dead tissue. Leaf edges might curl. Other people advise me to count sheep, I try this, doggedly, close my eyes and picture serried ranks of thistle-down softnesses passing through a gate. I mean, I mean, I name each imagined sheep after the patron saints of gardening that I can remember. St. Dorothy, St. Fiacre, St. Focas, St. Valentine, Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream, ba 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 ba, before I realise that my thoughts have moved too far to grazing rumination, which is to say all the good work is undone and I am wide awake once more. When I was a child, I overheard some of my classmates discussing bedtimes and the visit of a sandman. I assumed, not unreasonably, that this sandman was a man made of sand. He would be slightly damp and with a gritty, silicate voice and hourglass waist. He must read the sandpaper, I thought. <laughs> Nowadays, I see this sandman when I am too anxious to sleep and my teeth attempt to grind themselves into dust so that I can make a playmate for him. And when I was slightly older and wondered more about the purposes of things, I decided that the sandman must bring the sand to the house, as per the milkman, the postman. This childhood logic did not permit the purpose of firemen. <laughs> I asked my mother as she pumped my pillow and smoothed my hair, why do we need sand? And she was surprised by the question, but replied gamely, to fill the sand pit. And this seemed a little circular, but I let it slide. Did you know, she continued, glass is made when lightning strikes sand, and out of the corner of my eye I saw the outline of the sandman blaze and ring out, as if a finger had been pulled across a wine glass's rim. I see this sandman sometimes in the false reflections of a greenhouse on a too hot day. The edges of his clothes are burnished, fretted fire of fractal scorch marks. I was never convinced by E.T.A. Hoffman's sandman. I came across him while at university. I daydreamed in a lecture that ETA stood for estimated time of arrival, and I never care to find out whether this is incorrect. I think of this sandman every time that I see a crow on the wing carrying something baby round, indefinable in its beak, moonwards. Sleep as cultivation, landscaping, planting. Last night my sleep had all the quantities of something that is molish. I really can't say it any clearer than that. Blade-handed, blundering, pernicious, you might call such dreams restless, but the, met the, the best metaphor must surely have something to do with moles. It was sable thick sleep, filled with verminous things, undermining and filled with resented evidences of digging. 
a coralline or caroling or corollaries of worms, worms being the opposite of sand. You on with me. Where has the Sandman got to? And as we wait, imagine what it is that moles might dream. I would not wish them bright lights despite everything. I hope that a mole dreams deeply. I hope that they snore in shiny, tiny, shunting snuffs. And the Cordette song makes the Sandman into a kind of gardener, and there I am on surer ground. According to the lyrics, he is able to arrange the features of people into wonderful, terrible blazons. Give him two lips like roses and clover, bung 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 bung, perfume and peppery, polycultural mouths, perhaps permit a better kind of dream. And just like that, I see him. Don't look directly. There. A sand man stealing to my side of the bed. And he is wearing checkered silk pyjamas, half man, half snake's head fritillary, from the Latin fritillus meaning dice box, but I digress. His head is bent and nodding on its stalk, knowledgeable as an almanac, my camp with a croupier, no, yes, he is a gardener's assistant. No, he would be, let's stretch and grow deciduous, eyelids heavy and light all at once, like a bee's progress. He can help my gloves be pulled about my wrists. He can tie back my hair. He is making obvious jokes about bedding, where we treat the soil with sharp sand, coarse sand or quartz sand, a breath hissing like grains through the gloves. Perhaps you will see him too, the silks of him, the sapping of the day, and I am sorry for my yawn. Where are my manners like dew? Where sleep is foraging, a scrumping, a clearing. Where sleep is an important draining. Where sleep is rootlings. No, a readied plot, a sweet turning over. Thank you very much.